Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Okay, today I've got a very special video for you. I've got my pal here, Rick from Shooter1721. Excellent air gun channel, lots of awesome stuff that he's doing. And he is sort of the 22 plinkster of the air gun world. All right, Dave, so we're calling you out here a little bit. Oh. <laughs> All right, I, I, I want to put together I want to put together a match here between these two and I want to see who wins. Uh -oh. the, pow the powder burner or the air gun. Ooh. And I'll, I'll be the ref. I'll be the Joe Rogan. There, the oh, there we go. That's excellent. <laughs> so we're going to put that together, but oh, uh, we're going to be having some fun here today. So uh, thanks for hanging out with us here today. Thank Rick. you so much for having me here. I really appreciate it. I, thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. How's life treating you? Doing good. Doing good. We, we were very happy to make this trip, you know, with all the stuff going on, oh, flying yeah. and stuff like that. But uh, being invited here and, and getting to, you know, show off the... FX Crown Mark II here. I yeah. was pretty excited to do that. Yeah. So. so so we've done a, a bit of work with the FX Crown. You guys are probably familiar uh, with the base premise of this platform. Uh, this one is sitting in an aftermarket Sabre tactical chassis stock. Uh, you probably remember some of the videos we've done on the Crown before, you know, the more traditional Monte Carlo sporter style stocks. Um, so the cool thing about the Crown is it can be changed out to a variety of different configurations. And an entire cottage industry is kind of spawned, yes. uh, you know, from these types of guns, which is yeah. cool. So Sabre makes this awesome chassis, you know, adjustable comb height, length of pull, uh, the stock folds, AR-15 grip compatibility, M-lock accessory slots, <laughs> you know, 1913 pick rail on the top. I mean, you've got a lot going I on. I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's one thing about this gun is what, you know, with the Mark II, they actually changed uh, the power plenum okay. and they changed the valve. So it's much larger. Yeah, so we're shooting solids now as opposed to just skirted pellets. Correct. In the yeah. Mark II. In the Crown, yes. Right, and this is a 30 caliber. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. So we did a bit of accuracy testing, um, very, very informal, uh, but we were getting some excellent accuracy. I should say Chad was. Now, he got, showed me his, his notebook here, and uh, his four-year-old took some notes here to let us know what's going on. So you can see there, there's some very good data points there that we can refer to. Um, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, uh, yep. Okay, we do have some targets though. Uh, 50 yard accuracy, our average group size was 0 .381 inches. Um, excellent accuracy. We did put this particular gun on a B&K meter and we were getting, uh, let's see, 115.2 dB at the muzzle, 119 on the dot at the rear. And this is moderated. So what's yes. this moderator that's on this one? This is a, this is a, FX, this is a Donnie FL on here. That's a moderator that we have here. Okay. So. So now, now, the thing about moderators, don't think of it like a suppressor, which I guess it technically sort of is, but these are not controlled in the same way suppressors are. So moderators on air rifles can ship straight to your doorstep. And yeah. there's also air guns that are like integrally moderated and things. In this case, we've got a screw on moderator. Um, so really cool stuff there. So that's getting 119 at the, at the ear. So extremely quiet. Very quiet. Very yeah. quiet. Um, now we found, I'm just going to quickly share a little bit of our data here on the grouping size at 100. Now, you were mentioning that when, when you really get these things dialed in for you, you get some outstanding accuracy yes. out of yeah. them at 100. We, yeah, we're actually seeing when you, when you take your time, you get to run, you know, several runs through the gun, you'll see uh, under a half inch. Under a half inch. Under a half inch. All right, so Chad's average group size came out to around an inch, but we did have some outliers where Chad was able to get this gun to group uh, 0.598 inches. So that, that definitely backs up what you're saying. Yeah, um, yeah. I will say too that the thing about shooting these things long range, uh, of course we are gonna be doing some long range shooting. You can see this wind. Yeah. Look at this wind, yeah. okay? The wind greatly, greatly, greatly affects these air guns. And when we're going to a solid versus running skirted pellets, we can definitely get some better long range accuracy, which we're gonna be shooting this gun out to 300 yards today. Yes, sir. So yes, in this are. wind, that's gonna be certainly a challenge. Yes, I, I, I look up to this challenge and I'm thinking, all right, you know, when you said about 300, I say, like, okay, let's go for it. Yeah, so these solids have got a much better BC than the skirted yeah. pellets. Yes. Okay, outstanding. It's actually twice. Of okay. a pellet. So the BC is twice of what a skirted pellet is. So that makes even shooting in this wind very possible to hit your target, you know, on first or second shot, whatever you would do. But yeah, 
the BC is just outstanding. Well, I noticed that these pellets also have a really, or well, I guess, yeah. Slug. These we call slugs them slug, we call them hybrid. have a yeah, very, hybrid. very yep. deep cavity on them. So yes. they get a little bit lighter weight. They, they look like they would be heavier, but because yep. of that deep cavity, you get a little bit lighter weight. Correct. Is that on purpose? I think that was exactly their intent. Plus, to keep the think, weight down. Yeah, I get that. And then the mushroom. Right. Let's see so if we can get that mushroom. Yeah. Yep. So we will be testing that at some point. Yes, I'm sure. Yep, yep. Well, I'll tell you what, let's get yep. behind the bench, have a little bit of fun. You've got some challenges set up for us. I do. And I, I don't know. I mean, I'm optimistic, but some of those look like pretty hard shots. They, some of them are going to be a challenge today. This wind is going to test our <laughs> shooting skills. I can tell you that. Well, let's get after it. All right, let's go. Let's do it. All right, well, Eric, we're sitting here at the bench. I figured we'd start at 100. And what we have is we have some Firebird targets, so they're going to be reactive. So if you'll spot for me with this wind and help out a little bit, I'd appreciate it. All right, we you got the wind that? to our back, uh, Gustin, pretty All good right. here, Rick. So it is, you think, so let's see if we can go for like a, a 4 o'clock. Send it. Okay. What do you got? Low left, about two inches off the edge of the uh, popper. Okay. Whoa. How'd we do? Fun's Thank eye. you for your spotter. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good shot. Wow, this thing's got a little bit of a pop to them there, don't they? It's like a firecracker. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I, I mean, that did really well. So that was good wing call for me. I appreciate it. All right, Rick, no pressure, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think well, I can. <laughs> we got, let's check this wind out too. So, all right, let's see what we got. All right, let's see what we are working with here. All right. Oh, wow, wind really caught that one. Did you see how much the wind moved that? Yes. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that's interesting how, how much that went. But you, you get a good read on that. You can see that pretty good. So, wind correct. There we go. Bonsai. See the wind correction? That's it. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Stole one out of Jerry's book there. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of feel like where this is going. Yeah. Is that 100 yards is not the furthest distance we're going to shoot this gun. Well, it is an FX, so guess what? 100 yards is like, uh, okay, we're shooting FX. Okay, we're going see, a lot further than that. I see some spray paint cans down at, at 200. That's it. Yep. So, all right, let's swap up. Okay. Let's make it happen. All right, you got it. Outstanding. Well, Eric, 100 was pretty cool, but let's go to, uh, let's do like 217 yards, okay? You and got then it. what I did is I put two spray paint cans down there, and one for Eric, one for me, and uh, we're gonna see if we can uh, shoot down there and hit one of those spray paint cans. But what we're gonna do in air gunning, we don't have wind flags, and wind flags something that we use a lot in air gunning. And uh, it really helps you to see what your drift is because like shooting 200 plus yards like we are here, you're going to get a wind drift. Like today, uh, wind gusts can be, what are they today? 18 miles an hour wind gusts. Okay. <laughs> so we're actually reading grass and trees down there. And one thing that's going to help me to read, I, I'm, I'm using the Element uh, Optics Nexus. It's the first focal plane. And... Uh, one thing that you're able to do today is I cut the power back because I didn't want to dial. I didn't want to do anything. I thought, we'll just do holdover. So we're actually going to do holdover and just use our mills and we'll go from there. So Eric, if you're ready, we'll see if we can get a reading on the plate down there. And then I'll go for the spray paint can on the left. You got it. So I'm going for orange. Right. Let's see what we get. Let's see what kind of wind reading. Well, we this get. is a long way. Yes. And the scope right now, the power setting I have it on is at six and a half. All right. All I right. should be able to see that pellet flying real nice. That's solid. All right. Let's see what we get. Send it now, when I'm you're aiming ready. center mass. All right, pal. You're aiming at the at the can, correct? No, I was aiming at the. We're doing the wind reading on the on the plate on ah, the left. Okay. The hanging plate on the left. The wind drifted you to the left. Uh, you're aiming at the center of the plate, correct? Yeah. Uh, the wind drifted you about ten inches to the left. Okay, so I'll take a shot making that that call at the spray paint can on the left. Fourteen mil hold. Fourteen mil hold. Okay. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> on the first try. First shot. Oh. What the heck? How do I follow that up? I don't know, but I got you back there spotting for me, so it doesn't get any better than that. So there you go. Well, well that, was, that was really beautiful, wasn't it? Man, that was, that was a nice orange mist. Yes. You ready to give it a try? I'm going to go for Mr. Pink over there on the right. What All right. <laughs> All right, so Rick, you were talking about this optic. Now, this yes. is the one that Matt and Ted... Uh, yes. Design. So Ted's holdover. Yes. You mentioned holdover. That's what made me think about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No big deal. All right. Like shooting fish in a barrel. Yep. All right. I may have to adjust just a little bit here where I can see the reticle a little okay. better. All right. 14 mil hold. Yep. Now, let's see here what we're cooking with Crisco. All right, and then you said that was about an eight inch or 10 yep. inch wind drift, correct? Yes, it was, yes. Kobe. <laughs> <laughs> I miss him. <laughs> All right, let's uh -oh. do a reload, reload. Yep. yep. There you go. <laughs> you shot the head off. So Remember it, I was it saying went, it was going a little just, high. just a little high. Wow, so that, that wind is drifting that yeah. projectile a lot further. Did you see? Than, yeah, like eight or 10 inches yeah. at 200. Wow. Eric, we're out there at uh, 300 yards, and we got some big cans out there that are full. And I got one on the left, one on the right. And then in the center of the gong is an exploding golf ball, the old air gun exploding golf ball. So we're going to – I'm thinking about doing a sighter on the gong. I'll try not to hit the golf ball. Rick, we, we're really upping the ante here, okay. pal. So I, you... I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure what to say at this point other than I just want to watch you do your thing here. Okay, all right. Let's just see what we, what we get here with a reading. Okay. All right, let's see what we get. Now you're aiming at the center of the gong, correct? Yes, I am right at the golf ball, so I'm going to aim right at it. Send it. Yeah. All right, you see your impact? I Do I see at nine o'clock right you are about nine inches to the left of the golf ball and you hit about three inches low Whew. okay i'm gonna send one more there because i want to adjust that point of height you know get that that's height. yeah that's right you definitely want that elevation right, perfect I see what happens go ahead and send it i'm gonna stay center though if i miss the gong i understand what's going on send it okay you need to go back down about half of whatever you just adjusted. Okay. And your um, your windage actually looked about right. You kind of missed along the top curvature yep. of the plate. Okay. So bring it back down about halfway, whatever I you I will just... do that. I'm going to take a shot at the can here. Okay. With that. I think you're ready, man. All right. Let's see what we get here. Which one? The one on the left. Send it. Okay. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> thank you for what the wing the correction. Heck? I know. Thank you so much. Woo! Yeah. yeah. Oh my. Wow. There's, yeah. That thing had some hang time. Isn't it though? Yeah. Boy, was that beautiful though. So there you go, everybody. You get to see an air gun FX Crown Mark II putting it on the money at 300. That's just, you know, but without wind correction and stuff that you were doing there, I mean, that really helped out a lot since we don't have wind flags. Wow, this wind is humming. I'll tell you what, Rick, I want to yeah. I want to try that other can. You want to try that? Yeah, I'd like Let's to try. All right. Okay. That looked like it just went over the top to the left. Just a hair over. 10-4. Yep. Oh my goodness, I don't know how we didn't get a hit. Hold that, okay? That was, that was so close. Oh, do you see it that? It was so close. So close. <laughs> what the heck? It is so ridiculously fun to watch those pellets yeah. sail, sail down range. All right, we've got to connect here. Oh, you hit the post. I think it hit low. Sure yeah, did. You hit the post. Wow. Hit the post. Ridiculous. 
this is this is definitely an exercise in futility for me. <laughs> I, I I am no uh, I am no shooter seventeen twenty one or twenty two <laughs> plankster, but that's why we have those guys. That's right. So that we can we can sit in awe and observe. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give it a little bit more elevation. Okay. And if I don't hit it this time, I may try to stab at the golf ball. Yes, let's do that. Yep. Oh. It's right there. Like, it Did you see how it. it's so it, close? It was it like literally right off the edge of the, of the pot. Give me another round at the can. That All was right. so close on that. We've got to hit it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't really tell. Do me a favor. Go for the, let's go for the golf ball and hold at three o'clock, almost three, and see what we get. All right, sending it. All right. Ah, oh, I can see that a lot better, yes. too. Yes, yep. Yeah, that gong, let me yep. see. Okay, you see that? I do. Okay. Ah, oh, that gives me much more discernible uh, <laughs> aiming point. Yep, that's why I shoot the gun. You know what I mean? It just helps with that aiming point. See where that hit? Yep. That wind pushed that down. See how far it pushed it? Wow. Yeah. That's a huge difference. Huge difference. Oh, you bugger. Whoa, there it is, baby. Come on, man. Ain't small, miss small. Come on, man. Who cares about the can? You nailed the golf ball. Come on. That's wow. awesome. That is crazy. You just nailed a golf ball with an air gun at 300 yards. I would have never thought that I would have actually connected. You know, it's, it's funny what you said about having that feedback from the gong really gives you a lot of idea of, of what you're doing there. Yeah. You know, getting that yeah. in there. All right, Rick, so we're gonna close things out a little bit here. So a okay. couple of things that I learned, all right? One is to get that reading on the gongs for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to really see exactly where, you know, your hole would be. That's one reason I believe you were doing so well is because you were really using that gong to get that real precise reading on the wind. Yes, and I think for me, finding the, the reading like that and then you were spotting made that so much easier. You know, you're like, you were very precise with what you said and I was like, oh, okay. See Good. the correction, how quick it is? Yeah. yeah. I mean, a golf ball 300 yards, I would have never thought in a million years that we'd be able to hear that or see that go yeah. on, you know? I mean, I heard it too. Like when it hit yeah. the plate, it, you could just, you know, yep. hear it come apart. I think anytime you get that kind of data and that info, it makes it so much quicker, yeah. you know, for your follow-up shot. And when you're dealing with that kind of wind, like say we're out and we're hunting, uh, let's say we look at a prairie dog at that range. Yep. What do you think? Think it's going to kill him? Well, here's the thing. One observation as well is because the signature on this gun is so quiet that even if you were to take a shot at a prairie dog and let's say get some instant feedback, you'd be able to know and he wouldn't know. Right. You know, he'd be completely oblivious to what was going on. Correct. So you could totally take shots at prairie dogs out to that distance yes. and just kind of keep, you know, walking in because they do stay pretty still once they're kind of yep. hanging out there. Yep. Awesome stuff. One thing that I did, uh, of course, on my channel, I shot uh, three-quarter inch plywood at 300 yards. Went through. through. Three-quarter inch plywood, 300 yards. That pretty much tells you what you're hitting at a prairie dog, rabbit, and stuff like that. You're killing it. Wow. And I think even at uh, 200 yards, a coyote, is he's biting the dust. I have a feeling that we'll probably be testing some of that out in the future. So. Ooh, sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Now, that offer is still open with 22 Plinkster. I want to put that together. I want to, oh, be, I want to be the referee on that, okay? Yep. I, I, want to, I want to know when y'all do that because I want to be there for it. Okay. I've got to bust y'all's chops, okay? Uh, so where can everybody find you on YouTube? You can find me at Shooter1721. Instagram's the same, Shooter1721, even Facebook. So awesome. Yeah. 
The Book of Faces. <laughs> yes, the Book of Faces. Yeah, right. Guys, thanks for hanging out. We hope you enjoyed today's video. And uh, Rick, thanks for hanging out with me here today. Thank you so much, Eric, for having me here. <laughs> I can't thank you enough. I really appreciate it. Outstanding. Yes. I got a feeling we're going to do more stuff together. That sounds good we'll to me. We'll be seeing more of each other. So. <laughs> All right. Have a great day, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.